I didn't even know this existed, but Cam McCormick, tight end at Miami, started out at Oregon, is returning for what is his ninth year of college football. He was in the same recruiting class with Rashawn Gary, Nick Bosa, and Jalen Hurts. Battled through a lot of season-ending injuries. That's happened before. 18, 19, 20, and 21. I'm not against this kid, young man, Cam McCormick. But uh, when, is, when is it too many years? And how is it hurting or what it is hurting? Here's J.J. Joe and then Craig Paul, you guys, please, with your opinions because we've discussed this before. J.J. Joe saying, good for him, but man, since the NCAA didn't keep rosters expanded, a lot of high school kids getting killed by this. I'm in favor of waivers. Pandemic really messed things up. But the NCAA needs to help high school players out and keep rosters expanded until these players are out of the system. Yeah, and this, I mean, a ninth year is just, I mean, how many years is too much? Nine. Like, I had to think I was looking at a Twitter, a fake Twitter handle initially. Yeah. And <laughs> it was Bruce Feldman. Here's, here's where I don't get it. Okay, this is not a player who has any future in the pros, which is why he's doing this. This is also not a player who, based on the fact that he had eight catches for 62 yards and no touchdowns last year, is going to command a large NIL bag. This is not someone like Cam Ward comes down and they took him out to dinner with Rick Ross mm -hmm. because they wanted Cam Ward to come there and Rick Ross said, yeah, you can have me a wing stop sponsor and all like all these things. Like that was what they threw at Cam Ward and they should have thrown that at Cam Ward. So he's not doing it for what would be life-changing NIL money. Yes, he's going to get some money like they all do, but it's not going to be one of those things where he's going to it's a nest egg for him like it is probably for Cam Ward now regardless of what happens in in the pros. He's not helping Miami all that much. They could go find any tight end that's in the portal that could get eight catches for 62 yards and be a serviceable blocker. So I don't see what the benefit is to Miami at all to have this kid back on the team. I don't understand it. I don't get it. Now, good for him that he got a ninth year. Great. Go live in your truth. But I just I just don't get it. Yeah, I don't want to uh, bemoan the kid at all yep. or, you know, knock him. I mean. Oh, he's 25, so let's maybe. Well, like, oh, yeah. I guess he's a young man. Then, <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's probably he's probably married at this point, right? Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But uh, I know one thing. He's got a high threshold for pain. Yeah. He's got a huge pain tolerance. Come back from that many surgeries and injuries and be playing all this, this time. But, yeah, it just seems silly to me. It seems kind of goofy that you'd be still playing college sports uh, a ninth year at this stage and in, in, in your mid-20s. Um, the only time I really remember seeing people that old playing college sports was when they came back from their minor league careers. There you go, yep. And they played like two or three years in the minors, baseball, and decided, you know what, I'm going to come back and be a quarterback. And we, we saw that from time to time. And, you know, Brandon Whedon, for example. like John he, David Booty. John yep. David Booty. I mean, there's various examples of that. And, like, that's understandable. But, like, to have been – like reaching that age, but you've been in college that entire time is just kind of crazy to me. So yeah, and and one of the things that I found really alarming from the testimony and the discussion today, and I'm not going to pretend like I was, you know, all engaged in that because quite frankly, if we weren't doing the show, I wouldn't be paying the slightest bit of attention to most of that. But the fact that we're covering college sports, it's something that you got to be paying attention to, and I get that. But it would be well off my radar if if I didn't have to be paying attention to it because when you start getting into government and all that and I just I don't know I I, I zone out but um, some of the talk today coming out of this was that there shouldn't be any eligibility rules at all <laughs> like there was actual discussion or at least takeaways and, and what have you about not only the, the lack of restrictions on money but just eligibility in general. That just there's play not as long as you want? Play as long as you want. That there's not necessarily anything preventing them from being able to say that you could play as long as you want to. And I'm sorry, that's where I think people are just going to be like, I'm out. Like, I know for me, I, I do not care to, to watch. Now, let's not also treat this like we, we tend to do uh, with anything, and it's like one person does it, and we're like, the whole world's suddenly doing this. Like, there's not a bunch of people playing their ninth year of college football. This is still an outlier. 
but you are opening the doors to this being more and more common, and I don't know how good or healthy that is for the sport. It's great for the athletes, and everything's coming up athlete right now, which is overdue, but to how, how far are we swinging the pendulum the other way? Because the moment you start saying eligibility doesn't matter, which you're kind of knocking on that door already anyways, that's just not even college sports anymore. I mean, that is just... I don't know what that even is because it doesn't have the pro sports element of contracts either. So it's in this weird nether realm of some sport that I don't really recognize if we're suddenly tossing eligibility to the, to the side entirely. So that's another thing to be mindful of is, or just pay attention to is, yeah, even the eligibility rules are, are starting to get See, uh, that, under the microscope as well. All right, here's something. Uh, he had a string of injuries, broken leg, complications from a broken leg, a foot injury. When was the change in eligibility of a redshirt year? When, what year was that changed? Because for, there was a time before, I don't know, for a long, long time where there was a certain amount of percentage of the snaps. And then it was, you play one snap. Remember, Nick Florence at AT&T Stadium against Texas Tech had to come in in the second half, was trying the redshirt, came in, helped them win that game, lost an entire season of football. When did the the, the change well, so happen where they said I, four games? I think it was like so two or three years ago. Um, I think it was more more like five six years ago. But it was that way for a while beforehand because That's you could what I play. Just said. It, was, it was there was a time when you away. could, yeah. and they took it away. Um, and so yeah, it was you know one uh, snap, and that's a whole year of eligibility, and and then that that just didn't didn't make lasting well, sense. Okay, well uh, let the four games happen. That's fine. Yeah. I'm not against that, but use it once. Kind of but, like a transfer. Okay. Use that twice. And if you know, but, but you, I'll, I'll tell you this. Okay. In the same thing as the free market regulates itself, this also kind of regulates itself in the fact that, okay, if you want to win, like I, I, we're going to, we've seen it a little bit now where like, yes, fifth and sixth year guys are going to help you. We're get, The veteran guys kind of helped you win. Yes, that's true. But, I think when you're keeping seventh and eighth year players, if you get into that ninth, yeah, ninth year players, that is not going to help you win long term because the proof is in the pudding. If you win, the teams that win regular conference titles and compete for the national title have guys that are going to be professional football players or professional athletes. So if you're on your ninth year, that means the pros aren't calling. So that doesn't really mean you're going to help somebody that much. You might help them a little bit, but you're not going to help them to get to that level. Like All you right. need. You say it's it, okay. Okay. I've never so heard I don't of, think a lot of teams you, are going to want. You never had heard of a ninth year. I hadn't. Yeah. Craig hadn't. Here is another example: Michigan quarterback Jack Tuttle seeking a seventh year of eligibility. He, um, I think it was at Indiana. He went to Michigan. He said that if he doesn't get the waiver, he will try to be a part of the staff in some way as a GA. He now is seeking a seventh year of eligibility. Uh, Baylor had, who was it, Craig? Um, He'll play just as much as a GA as he's going years. to now. Matt yeah. Jones, uh, last year's Bryson Jackson. Bryson Jackson was a seven-year guy. Uh, uh, I mean, I will say that I did read about McCormick and the fact that he has already, um, and I don't know that I you know, don't, have the official confirmation from the University of Miami, but I was reading a couple of Miami uh, boards that uh, or posts that said that he had you know gotten his degree, obviously his first degree, but that he was working on you know another. It's like he's like using the school time wisely is what I'm trying to good. say, and that's good yep. because eventually you're not going to get a tenth year. But nine just seems absurd. Like a nine when you've got four season-ending injuries, there's. Like, listen to the to, to, to nature and to <laughs> yeah. God saying, like, yeah. I don't think this is in the cards for you anymore. That's, like, how I feel about it. But, you know, th that just seems silly. But he has apparently used the all that time in college to his benefit and will have one hell of a, you know, pair of degrees and a resume to, to go into the work for, workforce with eventually. So there is that. But, um yeah, that's just, that's just wild, and I was trying to track down the original post I saw where it was, it was talking about just, you know, eligibility just being off the table entirely. It wasn't a report. It was just right. saying, like, the way that this is shaping up, there's really not, not an argument yeah. to say that you, there is eligibility rulings, and because that's just something else that you could sue for and then probably win in court because Lord knows the NCAA is not winning anything, so... You know, that'll be something to to think about as well. But one thing that was very clear today was that eligibility rules in general, they're going to the wayside. Like, I mean, as far as the transfer part of this is going to the wayside. 
I, I don't think the days of sitting out a year, although those were becoming rarer anyways, but I think those are almost entirely going to be gone here pretty soon, uh, of where you're just going to be able to, to not only go when you want to go, but you're going to be able to go as many times as you want to go. That was the one of the messages that I got from today. So uh, buckle up for that because it's kind of, we're kind of like halfway there. We're kind of like one foot in, one foot out of that. But this would, today's events, appear to be leaning towards a world where, yes, you can basically have unlimited transfer opportunities uh, without having to be penalized for that whatsoever. So that's that's another thing on the plate right now that would be kind of a traffic jam, as uh, J.J. Joe was alluding to. Well, 